You probably can't tell by looking at me, but I have dementia. I am here tonight to share my story and to show you one of the many faces of this disease. Before I start, I have to tell you that in addition to having dementia, I suffer from anxiety and have a great fear of public speaking. My sister suggested that I picture everyone naked, but I told her the last thing I need is to add post-traumatic stress disorder to the list of my problems. And no offense, you all look great. I am really here tonight because I feel it is important to get the word out about this disease. Until I was diagnosed, I didn't give dementia much thought. In fact, I knew very little about it. February 1st was my first year anniversary of my diagnosis. Certainly not an anniversary to celebrate, but a significant one in my life for sure. It was a long and bumpy road before I knew what was going on. It was, sorry, wrong with me. I was working as an administrative assistant with the provincial government. I loved my job and was good at what I did. I put in extra hours, took on extra assignments, and gave extra of myself, and always offered to help out where I needed. I worked in a fast-paced environment, and I enjoyed being busy and engaged in my work. In addition to my work, I was taking courses eager to further my career. Everything changed for me one day in December 2011. On my way home from work, I started experiencing vision problems and numbness in my left hand and side of my face. I didn't know what was going on. The symptoms persisted throughout the night and even worsened, including slurred speech, migraine, dizziness, vomiting, and confusion. I had no idea what was going on, and I was really frightened. Even though I felt horrible, I went to work, pushing myself because I had so much to do. My boss commented that I didn't look well. After telling him about my symptoms, he urged me to seek medical attention and said it sounded like I may have had a mini stroke. I was glad that I listened to him. I drove myself to the hospital and they took me in right away. After several tests, the CAT scan showed that I had extensive lucencies indicating brain damage to my brain caused by a mini stroke. After many doctor's appointments and some insistence from my husband, I was referred to a neurologist for further testing. I was poked and prodded and tested for everything from MS to Lyme disease. 13 vials of blood was drawn from my arm at one time. My neurologist groaned when I told him that I felt so violated. The MRI confirmed the damage to my brain, and I was told they could not rule out MS. After a second MRI, it was suggested that I be tested for catacyl disease because of the pattern of damage that was observed. More tests, more waiting, more appointments. I was wondering what was wrong with me. I returned to work after missing six weeks. Work was great. They provided me with modified duties, but it was clear that I could not do my job the way I used to. I was struggling to function. Everything seemed to cause me anxiety, and I couldn't manage my stress. Too much anxiety and stress was a surefire way for me to have another stroke. Finally, last February, the geneticist confirmed the diagnosis of catacyl disease. Catacyl disease is a rare genetic disease of the brain that puts me at high risk for multiple mini strokes and has led to the early onset of dementia. Some of my symptoms include headaches, spinning thoughts, lack of focus, memory loss, difficulty finding my words, anxiety, difficulty with problem solving, and depression. I learned the hard way that it doesn't always pay to be so driven, 
and it certainly doesn't pay to ignore your health. I clearly put work and studies ahead of my own health. I recently went on long-term disability after more than 25 years of working with the provincial government. It was a hard pill to swallow and still is some days. I was so wrapped up in my job, I didn't know who I was or how I was going to make it through this. I needed to find new ways to reinvent myself so I could just be me. After researching Catacil disease, I made a call to the Alzheimer's Society in search of support. I learned that the Alzheimer's Society provides help to people with all types of dementia, not just people with Alzheimer's. I am so thankful that I called. They opened up their arms and invited me to sit in on support group for people with the early stages of dementia. In that group, I found acceptance and understanding. I look forward to group every week and have found comfort and trust with people that are experiencing what I am, and I no longer feel alone. The Alzheimer's Society is helping to prepare my husband and I for the road ahead. Through education groups and caregiver support, they have brought awareness and provided direction on what we can do now to assist us as this disease progresses. It is comforting to know that I can make decisions today for my future. It's scary as well. My husband, Ken, has been incredible through all of this. He is my advocate and my bodyguard. I'm not sure what I would do without his love and support. He has been both my rock and my soft place to fall when everything seems too much for me to handle. I love you. Even with incredible... Even with incredible love and support from my family and friends, I have low times and sometimes feel very sorry for myself, as you could imagine. I'm only 47 years old, and I am told that I have a brain of an 80-year-old. I worry what life will look like for me in five years and what it will be like for Ken. I can tell you that I am working on not sweating the small stuff. I can't change yesterday and I cannot foresee what will happen tomorrow, but I can learn to live in the moment, and what I do today can affect my future. I am working on enjoying life today and working on checking things off my bucket list, things I never took time to do before. I even started painting, and that's something I've always wanted to do. My advice to you is to slow down, turn off your cell phones, and tune into your life. Don't take your health for granted and don't ignore concerning symptoms you have. I have a favorite quote from the movie, The Way. You don't choose a life, you live one. Now is the time to do that. I hope you enjoy every moment, including tonight's fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Society. Thank you for listening to my story and for helping me check one more thing off my bucket list. Oh, by the way, I did picture a lot of you in your birthday suits. <laughs> and that's all I have to say.